Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, a little while ago, a cruise passenger bill of rights was implemented by the government. And some people are saying that, hey, when the Norwegian escape broke down and had to fly everybody home and cancel the cruise, they broke the passenger bill of rights. So one of the things during the pandemic that came out was this passenger bill of rights. It was amended, it was updated, and some things that came in. It's basically a 10 point list that helps protect cruisers from you know, itinerary changes, cancellations, long waits for your refunds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Being told you can only get future cruise credits instead of a full refund, that sort of thing. But we all know most cruise lines now, if something happens, you're offered your full refund. So this passenger bill of rights has done some really good stuff for the industry and cruise passengers alike. And I think it gives the cruise companies themselves a better face, a better look, you know, that they're not trying to keep your money if they cancel cruises, that sort of thing. So it's a good thing all around. But when the Norwegian escape hit the, the uh, sandbar and subsequently had to cancel its cruise plus the following cruises, uh, two of them so far, we'll see if the third one goes or not. But some passengers there, uh, you, you remember me reporting that some passengers were stuck at the airport, there was nobody there to greet them, to tell them what was going on, etc. From really good service on the ship, letting everybody know what's going on and uh, communications and keeping the passengers happy to when they got off the ship, to, to basically no support whatsoever is the reports that were coming out. And some people are now saying that, hey, this violated the passenger, you know, Bill of Rights and Norwegians should be held accountable. So I thought, let's look at the, there's basically three areas that on the Bill of Rights that this would cover uh, from what I saw. So the first point would be the right to a full refund for a trip that is canceled due to mechanical failures or a partial refund for voyages that are terminated early due to failures. Okay, so this is technically a mechanical failure. There was damage to the hull of the ship. It has to be repaired and they canceled. Did they give them a, a refund? Yes, they offered all cruise passengers a 100% refund. Not only that, they also offered them a 100% future cruise credit as well. So they not only met that point, they went above and beyond that point. I think, I think we can safely say that, you know what, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line on this point, you did really good. So did they break it on the passenger bill of rights point? No, they provided the refund and they went above and beyond as far as the refund that they had to do. They only had to give 100%. They didn't have to give any bonuses, but they did. So what's the next one? Uh, point number two would be the right to transportation to the ship's scheduled port of disembarkation of the passenger's homes or the passenger's home city. So you're either flown to the cruise port that you left from or you were scheduled to arrive in or your own home city. In the event the cruise is, terminal, ter is terminated due to mechanical failures, which as we just said, this would cover. Were passengers given airline tickets? Yes. They basically hired planes, brought them in and flew them home back to the original cruise port where they left, the destination that they had left from, which I believe it was Orlando. So did they, did they do that? Yes, I haven't heard anybody say they never were provided airplane tickets. Were they late? Were they delayed? Were they, you know, uh, did things go wrong? Was there confusion? Did they have to sit at the airport for long periods of time? Yes, I hear those stories. But as far as being provided the flights home, yes. I have, I've heard no one say they were never provided a flight home. 
So did Norwegian break the Bill of Rights there? As far as I can see, no, they did not. Was it handled properly? Probably not. Uh, probably could have stepped up a little bit more there, but no, I don't see them having failed the Passenger Bill of Rights in that case. Now, the next one could be interesting. The right to lodging if disembarkation and an overnight stay in an unscheduled port are required when a cruise is term terminated early due to mechanical failure. So, hotel stays. If you are, say, scheduled for a flight at 7 p.m., and the flight gets postponed and postponed and postponed and then leaves at 8 o'clock the next morning. In my mind, you expect to have a hotel that night, right? But not always. Uh, even the airlines don't necessarily have to, you know, if they end up canceling the flight and you can't fly until the morning, or your flight is delayed getting into your connecting airport because of weather, and you're, now you missed your last flight of the night and you have to fly out the next day. They don't provide you with a hotel room. Uh, there's a certain thing, I think it's 22 hours before they have to provide a hotel room. That's kind of, this point can be read two different ways, right? Like what is expected for a length of hotel stay. Now, if they dumped you off on a Monday and your flight was on a Thursday, then they have to provide the, <laughs> the hotels. There's no question about that. But if your flight was actually scheduled that day, but for, for reasons that they couldn't get the crew in time, for the, like the airline's fault, not the cruise line's fault, then is it Norwegian's responsibility to pay for a hotel that, there, or is it the insurance company, or is it the airlines who were late getting in. You see where the, it now becomes a very big gray area. And many people reported that they end up paying for their own hotel rooms and will now be looking to get reimbursed for it. I would suggest if you have insurance at the time to put it into your insurance company, you'd probably get faster results that way because Norwegian will have to look at this on an individual basis uh, you know, what time did the person check into a hotel room? What was the reason they checked into the hotel room? Was there a flight available that night? And they said, no, no, okay, we don't want to leave that late at night. Put us on the morning flight. That sort of thing. They would have to look at every single individual statement. But it, it's a very big gray area. So if they, if they violated any part of the Bill of Rights from what I saw, and I read over all 10, it would be this one, failure to provide, you know, accommodations, lodgings, if something happened. However, like I said, uh, as far as I know, the cruise line scheduled everybody to leave on that day. And the planes were delayed or rescheduled by the airlines. So whose fault does it become? It becomes a really interesting question, right? But again, this is one of those reasons you expect the unexpected and the reason I always say, always, always go with travel insurance anywhere you go, no matter how long the holiday is for stuff like this. Well, I hope you appreciate this update. What do you think? Did they violate the Bill of Rights? Or do you think they, they did everything they could other than maybe handle that disembarkation to the airport a little better than they did? They should have had people at the airport. They should have had people there assisting people that they can contact. And it should have been organized a little better than it was. But as far as trying to do the right thing, personally, I think Norwegian did as good as they possibly could in the situation. Let me know what you guys think down below. And until next time, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button till next time. Have yourself a safe and a great vacation.